Troy coming in with a mark of one and one. Nebraska, after that cancellation with Akron halting their game one festivities, a mark of zero and one off the loss to Colorado. We're off and running on a very busy day of college football on BTN. Four yards deep and bringing it ahead. And undercut quickly, there is Marcus Jones as Jacob Winemaster makes his presence felt on special teams. That's just the start you want if you're Scott Frost and your special teams unit. He said that that was the only area of last week's game that he felt was poor, was their special team play. The pin Troy down there in the 13, that's a good job by the kickoff unit. Number seven in the white, 21-year-old junior Caleb Barker, outstanding a week ago. A very good runner. You see his numbers in a one-sided decision last week over Florida A&M. The five touchdowns combined, four through the air. B.J. Smith is in motion. Now DeAndre Douglas on the jet sweep. Brings it around the edge, and he's walked out of bounds there. Lamar Jackson keeping tabs on DeAndre Douglas, a senior from Madison, Alabama. They love to give the ball on these jet sweeps to Douglas. He had two carries a week ago for 22 yards. Very dynamic, versatile wide receiver. You've got to keep your eyes on him. On number 80 and number 15, Damian Willis for Troy. Head coach Neil Brown's offense, very explosive throughout his time in Troy, Alabama. Barker's going to keep this one, tiptoe to the outside. Mohamed Barry was right there. As we get set to peak at today's Auto Owners Insurance, impact players first on offense for Troy. Well, you saw the two guys on the impact here impact in the first two plays. DeAndre Douglas, he led Tro the Trojans in receiving uh, last year. And then Caleb Barker's going to have to beat you with his legs on defense. Luke Gifford is the man that embodies this Nebraska culture more than anyone, a local kid. And Mohamed Barry, look for number seven to flash today on the field for the Courthuskers. He was all over the field a week ago. Barry to the tune of a dozen tackles last week. Gifford off the edge, chomping at the bit on third and long. Quickly get it out there to DeAndre Douglas. Douglas flashing down that sideline. The wide receivers all blocked very well for Troy. Aaron Williams is going to get credit for the tackle. Well, and that's what head coach Neil Brown said, that he thought the best improvement was for them last week against Florida A&M versus their first week defeat against Boise State was the way that his receivers blocked on the perimeter. If Troy's going to get any first downs and any momentum, they're going to have to get some positive yardage on those bubble screens and now screens. They picked up exactly nine on the play, James, to move the chains. Just a couple minutes into the proceedings. Just... Uh, the fifth all-time meeting between these two squads. Nebraska Ruin on the field winning the first, the first four. Down. Nebraska is challenging the call on the field. We have a Big Ten officiating crew today. Referee is Jerry McGinn. You just heard him with a Nebraska challenge. And very, but, very rarely do you see coaches in college football. Gosh, that does... That looks like he's short to me. You see that orange marker on the field. He's going out of bounds. A good yard shy of that marker. Folks, our rules analyst today is Dean Blandino. Dean's having a peek at these reviews that we're sharing with you on BTN. Dean, it's close. It's really close. These plays at the sideline are very difficult because what you have to determine is where the ball crosses the sideline. The line of gain was the 23. On our live shot, it did look like the ball crossed just short of the 23, but again, it's really tough to be exact. If it were me, I would move this back, but again, if there's any doubt, the call on the field should stand. The ruling on the field, which was first down for Troy, our replay judge today, Julius Livis getting into the action very, very quickly. And when I saw it in real time, it looked like it was short from our vantage point up here. So when you said first down, I was caught off guard by that. And again, you don't see coaches challenge in college a lot because every play is reviewed upstairs anyway with the replay officials. But Scott Frost saw the same thing that we did. James, it's two coaches today with a lot of mutual respect for one another. 
both Scott Frost and Neil Brown. The review. The runner was down at the 21-yard line. It'll make it fourth down and two. The game clock is correct. So, after reviewing, referee Jerry McGinn believes with Dean Blandino, back it up, and this will bring up a fourth down situation for Troy. And that's a big call. I mean, that's a three and out for Nebraska's defense versus, you know, a first down and, and you're still on the field in this heat. Get your guys an opportunity to get on the sidelines, get refreshed, and a good start for the Cornhuskers. Nebraska will send back Tyjon Lindsay, the sophomore, to return this punt. Troy University punter is Tyler Sumter, who averaged just about 44 yards last week in the win over Florida A&M. This one's a driving kick, booming punt deep inside Nebraska territory. It'll go in for a touchback. A tremendous punt by Sumter, who had a long of 50 last week. This one's good for 79 yards. Awaiting to see which quarterback will lead the Huskers today. It's going to be Andrew Bunch. Bunch, the redshirt sophomore, who hails from Tennessee. Gets the call. Adrian Martinez worked out very sparingly during the week. Bunch was getting a lot of reps with the ones, and it's his turn to shine now with college football on BTN. And look for Troy Walters to get some easy throws for Bunch, get his confidence up, but also run the football. I mean, a week ago, you get 329 on the ground. Don't change that now you have a different quarterback. Quarterback coach Mario Verdusco loves the way this guy can run. Absolutely. He was telling us that he can really scoot. He's a guy that can pick him up and put him down. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited to see this kid play today. He has a long family history here at Nebraska with his father being a walk-on. His grandpa and great-grandpa helped build Memorial Stadium. Very cool story. On first and ten, sprinting out quickly, it's Bunch, and he puts that one right on the hands of his top receiver, Stanley Morgan. We saw Scott Frost very animated on the sidelines. That'll be the case throughout today. Really nice rhythm throw here over to Morgan. No better way for a young quarterback to get in a rhythm than to have a guy like Stanley Morgan Jr. on the outside to throw to. You were curious as to who might match up. They do go with Terrence Dunlap, Troy does, to start against Morgan. This is second and five. Stoll repositions the tight end. Greg Bell dancing in the backfield. Neat moves. Bell dives out across the 30. Picks up first down yard. It's Sedarius Rooker going to get credit for the stop. And pay attention to the battle in the trenches. You heard the Troy coaches talking over and over about how big Nebraska was on both lines. Look to see who wins that battle. If Nebraska can establish that line of scrimmage, it could be a long day. Hymas, Foster, Conrad, Farmer, and Barniak. Put a lot of responsibility on that old line with a new quarterback today. Huskers don't get much there. Hunter okay, Reese is an all Sunbelt Conference player. 47 in the white. He'll be extremely active throughout the afternoon. Hunter was an all Sunbelt first team last year. Preseason all Sunbelt first team this year. Very active, a slippery kind of pass rusher. Finds ways of getting to the backfield and disrupt plays. This is second and eight for Nebraska on its initial offensive sequence of the day. Bunch to throw. Shimmies gets spun around, wrapped up and dropped by Tyler Murray. Well, they're trying to get Bunch on the outside. Uses athleticism to move. A nice job by Murray bringing him down in the open field. They really like Murray, James. He plays that spear position. They think of him more as a linebacker. And a really good job keeping contained. A lot of times those bootlegs try to get, you know, nosy, go inside. That's a tough tackle in space. He'll step away prior to a third and long. A little bit shy of the four-minute mark in the opening quarter. Scoreless in Lincoln. Of Andrew Bunch. Redshirt sophomore from Tennessee, turns 21 next month. <laughs> On third and long, the Huskers will stay conservative. Bell is wrapped up by Reese. It'll bring up some punting chores now for Nebraska. Smart play call there, just going with the draw. You expect a th screen draw, young quarterback, third and 18. Not a lot of play uh, calls you can make there. 
try to flip field position here with a good punt. The punting chores fall to Caleb Lightborn, averaged 42.7 last week. Spiral, fair catch being signaled and made right at the Troy 32 with a flag down. One yard fair caught at the Troy 32. There is a flag on the play. Approaching the five-minute mark of this scoreless opening Legal quarter. Formation. Offense, number 22, lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty to be added on to the end of the run. First down. Timeout. We'll get you back to Lincoln, where Scott Frost is back on the prowl, leading the Huskers on BTN app. Go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. Nine games in total on BTN before we're all done. As Caleb Barker is wrapped up and flattened by Luke Gifford. Well, Luke Gifford continuing his attack on the quarterback a sack and a half a week ago. Nice job not getting too far up the field, being able to retrace and come back to the quarterback. He embodies everything it is to be a Cornhusker. Look at where Nebraska is uh, building its sack totals through seven at Colorado last week. This moves it to eight. You mentioned Gifford, the captain of the team, a hometown guy. This means so much for him to be playing right here in Lincoln. Second and 14 facing the Trojans of Troy. Barker skips out of there and fires, hits his man in the slant. This is going to work for big yardage. Willis is off and running, wrapped up and dropped by Aaron Williams. Damian Willis, who had a couple of TD catches last week, a huge gain for Troy. It looked like there the line was stunning inside. I wonder if someone on Nebraska didn't blitz. A nice job by Willis, crossing face there on Lamar Jackson, getting open for his quarterback. A gain of 39, bringing up first and 10 for Barker, who's learning to trust his offensive line. As he bellows out to his center, Deontay Crimini. It's Smith in motion, quarterback key. Diving ahead, it's Caleb Barker. Barry's there to cover him up. Barker will have about seven or eight designed Look again, I mean, runs. The line stunts inside. Usually when you have no contain like that, it means somebody's supposed to blitz. Somebody's supposed to have contain on every single defense. You wonder if there was a mental error there on the Cornhuskers' D. Don't tell Scott Frost about that. Frost said the miscues just added up and added up. He loved the way his team performed with energy and enthusiasm last week. Just the, the miscues that you make maybe in a game one, week one situation, caught up and bit them. Showing blitz here off the edge. Parker had that one deflected. It was blocked by Aaron Williams, who is the man coming in off the corner. And really nice awareness by Aaron Williams that he wasn't going to get there. When you're blitzing, it's hard sometimes to get your hands out to stop like that. But a nice job paying attention to the quarterback, seeing the ball come out. A lot of times, speaking from experience, when you blitz, you're just so excited to try to get a hit on the QB. You have to realize when he's throwing it, and help become a pass defender in that moment. Huskers happy to have him in the lineup. Aaron Williams has been dealing with some shoulder problems recently. Boneyard's getting noisy. As the Trojans face a third and five from the Nebraska 24. Spinning down there, Mohamed Barry, who attacks every ball carrier. He's able to track down Sidney Davis. Really a nice job by Barry running inside out here. Getting on his horse to make this tackle. You see his athleticism. Eric Chenander telling us, their defensive coordinator, that he, listen, he plays how he practices. He practices all out. He's a tempo setter for them. You see him making a play there for the Huskers. Troy sending out its field goal unit. Cameron Kay will snap. Luke Whittemore will hold. And Tyler Sumter, who had a 20-yard field goal last week. Time clock growing late. This boot's on the way. And there was a whistle. But the kick is through. And Troy, after the big play to Damian Willis, gets on the board first. Willis... The ability to separate 
and then wheel his way, helping Troy to the early advantage. J.D. Spielman, very dangerous return man. Both coaches, they were talking to us earlier in the week, James, hoping to get a draw in the special teams game. Yeah, exactly. And then, look, if you're Troy, this is the best start you could ask for. You get a good stop on defense. You get some points. They've been in these big situations before. They went down to LSU a year ago, one down there at night. This team does not intimidate the Troy Trojans. They beat LSU, like you said. They snapped the Tigers' 49-game non-conference home win streak in the process. They're in Lincoln today. End over end. Over the head of Spielman. Touchback. Nebraska first and ten. As we look at today's auto owners insurance. Impact players for the Huskers on offense. Well, with Andrew Bunch getting his first start, he needs his electric wideouts to have a day today. They need to be able to get open so he can make some easy throws to them. And then for the Troy defense, Hunter Reese, we've mentioned already, he's a slippery guy, first team on self belt. And then Marcus Jones, not only in the return game, but also at corner, a freak athlete, a guy that they have big, big expectations for in Troy. Really the definition of what they talk about from a heady football player standpoint. Divino Zigbo is in the backfield with uh, Andrew Bunch. Bunch getting the start today. Adrian Martinez injured in week one, though, after a brilliant 300-plus all-purpose yard performance. Osigbo bouncing off tacklers. He's knocked down. It gives us a chance to send it sideline to Damon Benning, who wants to talk Nebraska tempo. Yeah, they want to speed up the tempo here a little bit to try to establish a rhythm, but James hit on an interesting point with the wideouts. Coach Frost didn't feel like they played particularly well last week, but yet they're the leaders of the team. So how they blend the wide receivers getting going along with establishing that inside run game is what Nebraska will try to figure out on this next drive. A little bit too mistake prone, Damon, were the wideouts last week. Huskers staying on the ground. Strong looking run from Ozigbo, flashing through. Cotton Marshall brought him down. Marshall, who recently earned a scholarship for the Trojans. Ozigbo is a handful. Really good vision that time by Ozigbo. Cut it back behind. Tanner Farmer. You have really good eyes like that, and you're able to get five, six yards of carry. That'll impact that defense. Out of the gun. Bunch will keep it. Show off his speed to the outside. Walked out of bounds by Melvin Tyus. As advertised, Bunch with a good speed. Well, Bunch makes a great read, realizes that no one's out there. It's an easy pull for him. You don't see anyone in white. It's really easy when there's nobody out there. A good read by him. Take what the defense gets you as a young player in your first start. Don't try to do too much. James, he did nice well. Read. He did well last week in tough circumstances, coming off the bench in the fourth quarter of a tight game. Bunch will throw here. Quick game for Spielman. Spielman's flattened by Melvin Tyus. Tyus who watches a lot of film for Troy. Able to sniff that one out. Yeah, really nice play there. Just attacking a lot of times on those tunnel screens. You'll see defenders run up to the blocks. He didn't run up to the guy trying to block him. He avoided him and made a nice tackle on Spielman. When you're playing Nebraska, you always have to find out where J.D. Spielman is. He's one of those guys that's going to get some carries, some screens. Explosive. Ozigbo repositions, Bunch with good protection. Now he'll step away and get cream as he throws this one into traffic. Nice catch by the tight end, Stoll. He fumbled. The ball's free. And as Bunch looks ahead, the officials awarding the football to Hunter Reese and the Trojans. A dangerous throw by Bunch, thrown in the traffic. Stoll makes a nice catch, takes a hit. The ball pops out, as you see, from behind. If you're Troy, I mean, you got to be pumped up right now. You get turnover, turnover margin. We talked about that. And when we talked to Vic Coney, he said they need to be plus three, at least, the turnover margin. So far, they got one. The opportunistic Hunter Reese always around the football and after Stoll made a fine catch, he lost it while transitioning upfield. First and 10 for Troy. 
A team on top by three. Previous plays under further review. The rolling on the so field now the question is, fumble recovered by did Stoll ever make a clean catch and become a runner? It looks to me like he has it. He does the spin move there. So now it's punched out and look for 47 there toward the right side of your screen, efforting to find the ball. Yeah, this is going to stand. The ball's out. 47 clearly recovers it. A chance for us to bring in our rules analyst from Los Angeles, Dean Blandino, taking another peek after the fumble against the tight end, Jack Stoll. Yeah, a couple things to look for here. I think the first thing is that a catch, and it clearly is. He has control. He takes a couple of steps. Then, is it a fumble before he's down? And then, do we have a clear recovery inbounds? All three, I think, are confirmed here, and we should let the ruling on the field stand um, of a fumble recovered by the defense. Big Ten officiating crew presiding over this one between Nebraska and Sunbelt Conference, Troy. Referee is Jerry McGinn. He's checking out these angles that Dean is sharing with you. First and ten for Troy. Reception with a fumble. So, Dean, they did confirm the call on the field. Exactly. Then, like I said, a couple of aspects to look at. That's why the replay official stopped it and was able to confirm it with, with the looks that we had. Troy gets a chance to build on its early 3-0 advantage. Joe, this is the big series for Nebraska defense. This is called sudden change. How do you rise up after your offense turns the ball over? Caleb Barker into the flat for Jabir Daughtry Fry. Fry measured quickly. Aaron Williams was the first man to put a hat on him. Daughtry Fry is an explosive tailback for these Trojans. Bothered last year coming back off of a knee injury. Just about 100% now. Takes this quick shovel. There's Tyron Ferguson, though, to collar him. And what you're seeing out of the Troy offense right now is they're trying to attack Nebraska on the perimeter. They realize the size that Nebraska has inside on the defensive line, so they're trying to stretch that defense. Tempo here now, James. Go, go, go for Troy. Barker throws it downfield. Deflected, grappling for it. They wrestle for it. No signal yet. Interception. Interception. The efforts of Lamar Jackson win him the football. A really nice job by Lamar Jackson there of playing the football. his body and Lamar Jackson comes up with it wrestling it away from the Troy receiver big turnover for the Huskers Trojans are up three nothing against the Nebraska Cornhuskers however a big interception here by Lamar Jackson being able to wrestle that football away from Damian Willis the big wide receiver he's beat early in this route He's a good seven yards in, in trail, but he finds the football as a D-back. You have to find the ball, play the ball, not the man. And a really good job of Lamar Jackson not giving up on the play. A big turnover for the Cornhusker defense. Jackson wins that tug of war with the Damian Willis, gets his first career interception, gives Nebraska the football. And it's important that he wins that tug of war because a lot of times Ty goes to the receiver. So a good job by him making sure that he showed the official. He wrestled it away and said, hey, I got it. That's James Laurinaitis. I'm Joe Beninati. Damon Bennings, our sideline reporters. We shout out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew helping yesterday and today get us on the air with Troy and Nebraska as uh, Lamar continues to get some refreshments. The Huskers go back to work on offense first and ten. Maurice Washington has some room. He slithers outside. Washington burning across the 35. Scott Frost called him a freak of a freshman, and he shows you why. 
Well, you can tell why they say that he's the next great one here and has a knack for the cuts. This is a power play to the right. He cuts it back to the left. He sees there's wide open space. And a nice job by Maurice Washington giving this offense a boost, starting back up in their own end. 29-yard gallop for Washington, who became academically eligible this summer. And showing off in the Husker backfield that gets deeper and deeper by the moment. Out of the pistol, quarterback Andrew Bunch. Maurice making a one-man miss. 3-0 here. We send it to Chicago and Mike Hall for this T-Mobile studio update. All right, Joe and James to State College where Trace McSorley looks to the right and then throws a perfect ball down the middle. Cofford, a 40-yard touchdown from DeAndre Tompkins. It's 7-7 early on in the first. Guys? Penn State and Kent State. Indy Lions are perfect against the flashes as we get a flash of yellow, a flag on the play. False start, legal snap on the center, number 62. Five yard penalty, they're down. Second down. A couple moments ago, we saw Maurice Washington in action. Well, you see the guard pulls to the left of your screen, and he sees a big gap to the opposite way. On those powers, you're supposed to follow your puller. But tell you what, he has that knack, what does Maurice Washington just find space and hit it with that ability. There's no reason to believe that he's not going to be the next special one at tailback here at Nebraska. MVP of the Under Armour All-America game was Washington, who hails from California. Second and 14 now. Trouble for Washington, who spins away and then gets buried. Ball's loose again, ripped out of there. Trojans say they have it. Nebraska, which lost a couple turnovers early last week. No fumble there. Washington was down and brings up third and long. Washington's trying to get something out of nothing. Looks like that, that ball was punched out. Now, was his knee down? His left knee. That doesn't look like it. There's a whistle before the next snap. Tyler Murray, 19-year-old sophomore, is a real ball hawk at that spear position for the Trojans. And he's wondering if uh, Washington put that one on the turf and gave it back to Troy. Well, Coach Frost talking about the little things. We've already had a fumble in this football game. You have the, the penalty on the offense that puts you behind the chains on second down. And then what looks like a fumble here by Washington. These are the little mistakes, he said, that just kind of add up and become big things throughout the course of a game. Look at that left, this left knee here. I don't know how he doesn't get hurt on this play with the way his knee bends, but it looks like that ball gets punched out right before it touches. And then you have to focus on, is it a clear recovery by a Troy defender? It would be Hunter Reese again around that football, but Murray was there. It pops loose. Reese grabs it. He's already got one fumble recovery today. And as he goes down, his right hand just punches that football. Let's bring in our rules analyst from Los Angeles, Dean Blandino. You've been busy with us, Dean. What say you on this one? Yeah, you guys have had a lot of stuff so far. This is really close, but I I've got fumble here. It looks like the ball comes out just before that left knee leg hits the ground, and we do have a clear recovery. So to me, this is a fumble with a recovery that should go over to the defense. This is somewhat of, if this is a fumble, with a clear recovery by Troy, and that's how they rule it. This is kind of deja vu to a week ago with the early turnovers. And then no panic, though, James. Yep. That was throughout the uh, coaching meetings yesterday. The coaches said that uh, there was no finger pointing, no panic. They, were, they stayed true to the plan. We still have uh, rules analyst Dean Blandino with us. 3 nothing for Troy and a chance here, Dean, if this goes the other way and gets ruled a fumble for, for Troy to be deep in plus territory. Let's see, let's see what they say. Further review. The ruling on the field stands. Third down. 
Dean, we appreciate your help. Nebraska dodges a bullet there. And you can see the coaching staff for the Trojans not pleased at all with that decision. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Head coach of Troy. His first of the game. Be a 15 yard penalty. First down. 38 year old Neil Brown, Kentucky native, now in his fourth year as the head coach of Troy. A very good offensive mind. He laid a little bit too much into the officials. You have to keep your cool as a coach. You know, everyone has their own opinion. They look at the replay. You can think one thing's another. You want to fight for your guys. However, you cannot afford to have a penalty as the head football coach. Stepping off of that sideline, the officials docked him for it, giving Nebraska a first down. Washington spins away from a tackler, still on his feet, dropped just shy of the 50. As we send you to Damon Benning for more on Maurice Washington. Yeah, you've got a lot right here in just this little series. He's been high risk, high reward. He's a little bit like that washing machine, right? He's always on that spin cycle, but when he's clean, he's clean. Nebraska staff wants him to get what he can get and stay with the play. If he does, you see flashes of brilliance. Young man Damon who chose Nebraska over Ohio State. Bunch gets out of the pocket. Andrew Bunch running to the sideline, and then he's escorted there. Tyler Murray was in the vicinity. And that penalty hurts Troy because Nebraska was in a third and really long. And so that unsportsmanlike conduct on the head coach gives him a new set of downs. And then on that prior play there, as a young quarterback, throw that ball away. You're out of the tackle box. No need to take a loss there. Just toss it into the stands. Live for another down. Final 115 of the opening quarter on a sun-baked 80-plus degree day in Nebraska. Bunch sprinted. Looking upfield, heaves it there into traffic. It's picked off. Intercepted by Tyler Murray. Second turnover of the opening quarter for the Trojans. Well, we've mentioned Tyler Murray's name a lot coming up with plays always around the football. But if you're Andrew Bunch here, just throw it away. You can't throw across your body late into the defense. When you do that, bad things happen. I was taught by Coach Trussell, he used to tell us all the time, if every single possession ends with a kick, that's a good day. As a young player, a kick needs a punt in that situation. His field position, sometimes it's not there. Don't try to force it. Don't try to do too much. The game's only 3 nothing. The old stake. Those words from James Laurinaitis, a two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year at Ohio State. Lots of motion. Big heavy duty hit lowered by Antonio Reed in from his safety spot. My goodness. Dave. <laughs> Delivering the wood was Antonio Reed. You could hear that. You could feel that up here, Joe. B.J. Smith sure felt it. The tailback for the Trojans. I felt it up here. Waning stages of this opening quarter. Caleb Barker in the gun on second and five. A handoff goes inside. Will Honus will get credit for the tackle. Stilly and Stotenberg all around it up front in that 3-4 look for Nebraska. As Antonio Reed makes his presence felt at the tail end of the quarter. Troy has the 3-0 advantage on a Saturday afternoon in Lincoln. All the F-16 fun that started it, but since then, Nebraska's been mistake prone, and Troy's taken advantage to the lead by three. Dressed in red to see their Huskers entertain the Troy Trojans. Troy, third and four. The quarterback is Caleb Barker. On the deep drop, floats it out there into the flat. The tackle made by Dedrick Young as he kept tabs on DeAndre Douglas. Young, 
Nice job by Douglas. Getting across with the crosser. It's not easy as a middle linebacker recognizing a receiver coming across. You gotta try to get there just in time as he did. Made a good tackle. A sure tackler for the Corn Huskers. He just needs 45 more tackles to move into the top 10 all time for Nebraska. Brings up a fourth and short for Troy. They'll punt it. Tyjon Lindsay says fair catch. And he'll make it just about the seven yard line for Nebraska. Troy has the advantage by three. As we are here in Lincoln where there has been so much championship tradition. Relive the moment for Nebraska's last national championship team. Tom Osborne, Scott Frost, Grant Wister, many others discussing the stories behind one of the greatest Cornhusker squads ever. Big Ten Elite, 97 Nebraska football presented by Physicians Mutual, Sunday, September 30th, 7 Eastern, here on BTN. Divino Zigbo stacked up right along the goal line there. They'll say he's uh, stopped at the two. Carlton Marshall, who's a go-getter, James, he'll, he'll get in there and stir it up. Him and big, good, big number 90 comes and tries to finish him off. You have to be careful back in your own end with those holding plays. Nice job of that Troy defense with the negative play. A loss of five. Motion from Mike Williams. Straight ahead running from Ozigbo near the 10. Will Sunderland's in there to make the uh, stop, the transfer from Oklahoma. Troy Walters telling us that Ozigbo is the most dependable guy they have in the backfield. He's always going to give you five yards. You see that there. Getting them out of dangerous territory. Now you have some space to work on third down long. The guy who had a really good fall camp. Bunch on third and eight. Ozigbo tracked down by three different tacklers there as Troy swarms to the football and Nebraska does not take a chance throwing it on third and eight after Bunch threw a pick. Yeah, and then you see Trayvon Sanders again. First team all Sun Belt a year ago. Right now, the offensive line for Nebraska is struggling with the multiple looks that Vic Koning's defense will throw at you. Good stop there by Troy. Time to punt now for Nebraska. And Caleb Lightborn will hit it. Hangs this one high. Settling under. Skipping away. Great return. Inside Husker territory and deep. One more cutback. The roots and the distance for the touchdown. Darius Rooker, the senior, goes all the way. The special teams, again, something that Coach Frost was disappointed in. You see the missed tackle and then the great vision in the open field by Sedarius Rooker, cutting back in great effort by the Troy punt return unit to continue to work down the field to get those extra blocks to get him into the end zone. This is a team that specializes in return TDs and defensive TDs. They get on the board, building the lead to 10 now. The extra point is slammed through by Tyler Sumter. Sedarius Rooker, front and center. Well, right here, you see the talented return man cutting back, giving Troy a 10-0 lead here in Lincoln. Troy has a 10-0 advantage in James. Nebraska's miscues are hurting them again. Yeah, these are all the things that Coach Scott Frost talked to us about. We could not have the turnovers, and our special teams needs to get better. It has to improve. That was the only area he thought they played really poor a week ago. And so far today, not looking good. Same old, same old. But if you're Coach Scott Frost, you can walk up and down that sideline, Joe, and say to your team, look, guys, we've been here before. Just a week, a week ago, we were down 14. We rallied back. Let's do the same thing, and then you can coach these things up throughout the week. Not what you want to see out of Coach Frost. Bratcher Underwood will kick off for Troy. This one knuckles, spins towards the sideline. Spielman takes it from the 13. J.D. Spielman looking for a crease, and he got thumped. 
As we send you back to Chicago, Mike Hall for this T-Mobile studio update. Well, guys, you just saw a punt return in your game. How about Indiana Ball State? This is Jay Shun Harris making moves. 86 yards to the paint. It's 17 to 3. Hoosiers up about 12 and a half to go in the first. Indiana, Mike, has won 13 of its last 14 regular season non-conference games in control there. As the Huskers try to get themselves on the board, trailing the Trojans from Troy, Alabama by 10. Greg Bell in the backfield with Andrew Bunch getting the start today for the injured Adrian Martinez. Slips it up there nicely. Pick up by J.D. Spielman. Tyus is there to make the stop. Nice job by the wide receivers blocking on the perimeter there. Abel and Spielman to split the defenders. You've got to find ways to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers, Stanley Morgan and J.D. Spielman. 16-yard gain for Nebraska. Spielman in motion. They'll swing it out to him again. Good blocking ahead. Spielman will pick up a first down. Tyus gets credit for another attack. Joe, this is the same exact play as the last play. They just flipped it. Instead of going to the left side of the screen, they went back to the right side. Fake the dive, throw it out there to J.D. Spielman. Keep running it until Troy fixes it. Spielman was under the weather, was, wasn't was right during spring ball. The coaches new on staff. What's, what's all the fuss about? He's been great lately. One play here. Beautiful moves from Bell as he's carved down in the backfield. Stepping up was Marcus Jones to make the tackle. A big hole up the middle of the field created by this big offensive line of Nebraska. We see a nice job by Cole Conrad there hooking the defensive tackle and then good vision by Greg Bell to cut off of him. Conrad, who had an ankle bothering him last week. None the worse for wear. Bunch to throw. Looking down the middle. Watching this one into traffic. They fight for it again and the ball is incomplete. Nebraska trying to take a shot at the end zone there. A nice job by Marcus Jones. But a questionable throw in the double coverage. A nice job, really, by Stanley Morgan Jr. turning into a DB. S slapping that ball out. Smart decision there by Stanley Morgan. Second and ten for the Huskers. In Troy territory, Bell. Skips to the outside. Runner. Stopped by A.J. Smiley, reserve linebacker for the Trojans. Joe, that's a really nice cut by Greg Bell. His number 90, Sanders, has been in the back. He was there again. Couldn't quite get him down. But they're struggling with Sanders up front. Bell gets eight. It's third and short. Give it to him again. Lassoed by Tron Folsom. One of the leading tacklers for the Trojans, but Bell picks up the first down, and Nebraska's humming now on offense. They are, and you can see this tempo is starting to wear on the Trojans' defense. You see some guys subbing out, hands on the hips, trying to get Troy on their heels. 329 yards on the ground last week against Colorado. Swing it out. Tyjon Lindsey. Lindsey dodging one. Didn't get away from that second tackler, however. Next Saturday, BTN tailgate returns. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith, Spice Adams, Michelle McMahon. They're all on campus in Iowa City, setting the stage for that huge West Division showdown between the Hawkeyes and Badgers. BTN tailgate presented by Geico. 10 a.m. Saturday. As the Huskers waste no time at the line of scrimmage. College football on BTN. Lots of Greg Bell on this drive. Gets him up there quickly on third and short. It's Bell. Nice down. Tron Folsom. Coaches say he can be difficult to coach at some times, but he's a talent. He's very active for that Trojans defense. Nice job just shooting the gap here. Sees the hole, goes low. Nice job wrapping up. And Troy's defense, a year ago, dominant in the red zone. Led nation in red zone defense a year ago, and a nice job there. On the loss of one, Barrett Pickering, he's from Birmingham, Alabama. Hoover High School, not far from where the Troy Trojans reside. A 28-yard attempt. Flag down. Wave game. Offense, number 32. 
Five yard penalty, fourth down. That will just add to the aggravation of that man. Well, it makes the kick that much more difficult when you back it up on the freshman kicker. Pickering, who missed from 43 last week. This will be 10 yards shorter. Over to snap. Armstrong with the hold, the kick on the way. And no. The freshman kicker missing from 33. And Troy's lead remains 10. Picture tells a story there. Just one look at the face of Scott Frost as his team is in trouble in the first half here in Lincoln. <laughs> Sawyer Smith has come on to run this series from the quarterback spot for Troy. Smith taking this one down the line. Keeping his feet moving, diving out across the 20. Caleb Barker is the man normally at the wheel for Troy. And Sawyer Smith comes in at 6'3 and 220, and he can run. Just tuning in with us, James. Sumter from 37. Sidarius Rooker on the punt return of 58. And Troy has the 10 0 upper hand on Nebraska. Troy's done everything that they talked about all week leading up to this to have a chance to win this ball game thus far. Daughtry Fry repositions in the backfield. Smith keeps got plenty of room and he'll gallop across midfield. Sawyer Smith on his horse. Chased down from behind by Aaron Williams. Troy is in business again. Right here, he reads the defensive lineman jumping inside, reacts off a of stilly, and he's off to the races. And a huge play, huge chunk of yardage for the Trojans, catching Nebraska off guard. Rambling 57 yards in the process for head coach Neil Brown. The offense showing itself quite well last week as they ran all over Florida A&M 59-7. They were humbled by Boise State, however, in their opener on home turf. Smith still huffing and puffing. Late in the play clock. I don't think he got it off in time. Delay of game. Offense. Number three. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, when we were talking to Coach Brown during the week, he had mentioned in order for them to have a chance, they had to win the turnover margin, which they're plus two right now, and they had to at least have a draw on special teams which with Nebraska's miss and obviously the punt return for a touchdown, they're winning that. And it's not like they've caught Nebraska off guard. Their coaching staff, Joe, when we met with them yesterday, kept saying, hey, this is going to be Troy's Super Bowl. They're going to come in here. They're going to love the atmosphere. There's no way we can overlook them. Yep. They've answered the call so far today. Sawyer Smith, who gave Caleb Barker a really good battle in camp, getting the snaps on this sequence, running the ball effectively. As Carlos Davis has him tied up around the ankles, a late flag hits the turf. Big Ten officiating crew presided by Jerry McGinn this afternoon. Dead yeah. ball, personal foul, defense, number seven, with target. Uh oh. Previous plays on the further review. Well, Muhammad Barry launches at the end of that play with Smith clearly down. James, have a peek at the targeting rules. This could be expensive for Muhammad Barry. Well, the important thing here is this one. No player shall target or make forcible contact to the head or neck, and it looks like he launches with his shoulder at Sawyer Smith. Yeah, this one is going to be open to interpretation. If they if they go with targeting where he was leading intentionally with his head, you can get him. Now, his shoulder makes contact, too, but it's the back of the shoulder slash head. A really good look at it. This is really going to be pretty subjective 
based on what you feel his intent was, which is hard to gauge. Mohammed's always flying around, making those big splash plays. Our rules analyst in Los Angeles is Dean Blandino. You've heard him speak a number of times already today, and now he'll discuss targeting. Yeah, so the key is do we have an indicator? Do you have a player who's on the ground, and he gets defenseless player protection, and to me, the defender's leading with the shoulder. He attacks to the head back area. That's targeting. Dean, they have confirmed the ruling on the field. And this is going to cost Mohamed Barry. Well, it's important to note that it's not just helmet to helmet. You can't launch with a forearm. You can't launch with a shoulder to anyone's head in a forcible manner. And that's what Mohamed Barry did. He hit him with the shoulder, but it was shoulder to the head. And it looked like he launched at him. This game is a few yards away from spiraling out of control now for Nebraska. Troy operating very well. B.J. Smith stopped there on the edge. Khalil Davis put a hit on. Deshaun Neal was in the vicinity as Barry exits the stadium. And to the play. Personal foul. Defense. Number 43. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Nebraska flagged 11 times last week against Colorado, and the penalties are mounting now. Look right here on this. When he launches his shoulder, I mean, that's shoulder to head. And trust me, as a defensive player, I don't like tossing guys out of the game. I'm all for player safety. I don't like the fact that you toss a young man trying to play hard for his team. But on the other side of that, Joe, you have to play by the rules, and that's clearly in the rule book. You read it word for word, that is targeting. B.J. Smith is the man to the left of Sawyer Smith. B.J. in motion, another whistle before the snap. <laughs> Nebraska trailing by three after the opening quarter. It's a 10-0 decision now. Play of game. Play of game. Offense. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Five penalty. First down. First and off the delay of game with just about 540 separating us from halftime, Troy is knocking on the door for more points. If you're Eric Chenander right now, you're just, you need your defense to step up and get a stop. You have to be able to hold them here. If you hold them to a field goal, that is big momentum for you being deep down right now. Keeps it two scores. They sub Caleb Barker back in the starting QB. Douglas in motion. Smith to the end zone. High stepping Troy to a 16-0 lead. A nine-yard sprint. Well, a nice job here by Smith. Breaks the tackle of Will Honus, who's in for Muhammad Berry. And you feel the impact already of the guy who got tossed for targeting. Just a few moments ago on this most recent drive, Tyler Sumter comes on for the extra point try out of the hole from Luke Whittemore. And Troy takes a commanding lead. The Trojans from Troy, Alabama. A 17-0 advantage. B.J. Smith on the board. Worrisome looks in Lincoln. And Troy getting the early jump on Nebraska, and it's faithful here at Memorial Stadium. It's a 17-0 lead for the guys in white. B.J. Smith, the last man on the board. And Scott Frost's team has some catching up to do. Bratcher Underwood, who routinely has been putting the football through the back of the end zone. It was 8 of 9 on uh, touchbacks last week against Florida A&M at home. Gets a toe into this one. Spielman waiting for Nebraska from the 5. J.D. Spielman hits the gas. Spielman, a smart-looking return near the 35-yard line. Well, on this last drive here on the touch or on the long run by Sawyer Smith, right here, Ben Stilley is the guy that he is reading. And as you see, he pulls the ball when he sees him crash with the tailback, and there is nobody accounting for Sawyer Smith. Nothing but green grass ahead of him. 
And then on the touchdown, Will Honus, the guy who's re replacing Mohamed Berry, unblocked. That will drive you nuts as a D coordinator. Unblocked players just missing tackles. Nebraska without Adrian Martinez so far. Bunch connects with Washington. The freshman's tackled down there as the Trojans are attempting to strip the ball. Nebraska's already committed a couple turnovers. Folsom with a stop. Folsom, who had a couple of interceptions, number two did, last week against Florida A&M. And this is a really big drive for the Cornhuskers because Troy believes so much right now. They believe that they can win this football game. You have to put a little bit of doubt in their minds before the half. On second and ten. Bunch play action over the middle. Straight shot to Morgan. Stanley Morgan deep into Troy territory. Stan the man, according to offensive coordinator Troy Walters. And he was wide open. And a really nice job. He's just running up the seam. No one comes out to cover him. You wonder if that's a mental error on Troy's part. But a nice ball by Bunch. One of the captains for Nebraska setting the tone now because they've got some rallying to do. Washington dances to the outside. Maurice Washington down the seam. Tyus there to take him around the knee to prevent the touchdown. And right here, you'll see the guard pull to the bottom of your screen. But the vision, again by Washington, to cut back and then bounce it to the outside using his God-given ability and speed to get the big run. 21-yard sprint. Washington straight ahead, lowering the shoulder there. The kick at first was Jarvis Hayes. He says he's playing at his dream school. Alabama native, playing at Troy. They wish he was about 20 pounds heavier, Jarvis Hayes. Tremendous speed, gets to the football quickly. We had a great time chatting with Vic Koning yesterday. He put on a, a show to the defensive coordinator in helping us assess the talent of Troy. Bunch. Looking, fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Stanley Morgan. get to release the balloons here, Joe. In Lincoln, they've been holding on to those things for a while. How long does, I mean, you're a science guy, how long does helium last in those things? Long time waiting for that first score. They're flying high, though, looking good. Barrett Pickering on for this extra point try. Right down the middle for the freshman. He missed a field goal earlier today. Nebraska starts to feel a little bit better for itself. Bunch heaves this one for Morgan back of the end zone. And that's pay dirt for the Huskers with college football on BTN. I'm just a bit of a blowhard. Come on now. I thought you were a smart guy. Debatable. I asked you because I have no idea. Debatable. <laughs> Huskers to kick off. Trailing on home turf by 10. Booming kick. Trojans are going to let this one fall for the touchback as we revisit the TD. Well, the touchdown, a really nice job. Morgan's going to come all the way across the field here. And a really nice job by Andrew Bunch being able to take his time and deliver an accurate throw. He has all day. He's patient. Delivers a rocket to their captain. And now, as I said at the beginning of that drive, a touchdown was critical because Troy has all the belief in the world, which they still do, but it puts a little bit of doubt. Now, if you're Troy, you're thinking, hey, we can't let this slip. A big thing for Nebraska would be a three and out here to keep that momentum. Be interesting to see what Troy's mentality is, either to go for more or just run it out. Nebraska's walk-on quarterback, Andrew Bunch, clicking for his first TD pass. Daughtry Fry is stacked up. Nebraska swarming in the backfield. Will Honus gets the jump. And a nice job by Will Honus there. Getting the tackle for loss. Brought him up when he missed the tackle there on the touchdown run. Next thing you want to do is just get back out there, get another opportunity to make a play. He did a really nice job. Honus was thought by many to be the top inside linebacker in junior college last year, playing at Butler Community College in Kansas. 
Caleb Barker leading the troops for Troy. Last trip it was Sawyer Smith at QB with a tremendous quarterback run. The longest play of the season for the Trojans. Longest by a quarterback in some 16 years. Barker under all sorts of heat. Hacken Maladun all over him. Freedom Hacken Maladun. With a really nice job getting pressure. I was wondering if that ball was a lateral or not when he tossed it. But Hacken Maladun getting the pressure. Nice job keeping contained, able to get him down. That's definitely a backwards pass. Looked like a lateral. 17-7 for Troy. Folks, let's take a look at this message from ZipRecruiter. It's the smartest way to hire and the official hiring partner of the Big Ten Conference. Hiring was always a huge challenge. Endless hours on job sites with not a lot to show for it. Then, I found ZipRecruiter. They figured out hiring. I post my job, they put it all over the web, and they send me the right people because their technology is smart. ZipRecruiter often sends me the right person in 24 hours. The smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, the preferred job site of college sports fans. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash game time. Fans are fired up in Lincoln right now. Troy facing a third and 18 and Memorial Stadium at full throat. Not many play calls for third in this long. Look for a screen, a draw. Stay on the ground. B.J. Smith not going far. DeAndre Thomas makes the tackle. Nebraska's going to ask for time. We'll take it with them. Get you back to Lincoln right after these words. Coach Scott Frost waiting to see what Andrew Bunch will do on his next offensive sequence. Troy jumped to a 17-0 advantage. The Trojans are going to have to punt here. Punt chores for Tyler Sumter. Little rugby effort. End over end dribbler that takes a Troy roll. A little backspin there. They'll down it just inside the 30. That's where the Huskers will take over with a little bit more than two minutes to work in the opening half. The hard thing about these rugby kicks when you're on the punt return team is that they don't carry very far a lot of time, Joe. And so you have your back turn running down with the guy on punt trying to get a block for your returner. You have no idea where that ball's going to land. That's why it's imperative that the returner is yelling, usually Peter, 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 and that means get away from the ball, run to the sideline to avoid a muff. A lot of technical jargon there from you, Laurinaitis. I like it. Bunch. Swing it out there. Sneaky moves to make one man miss on Spielman, but then finished off by Tyler Knudsen. And this is the third time they've run this play with J.D. Spielman. This time, Troy. And the Nebraska fans not too happy with the way that play ended. They were hoping for a call, didn't get it. Four wides in the pattern here for Bunch off the head fake. Shooting deep down the middle for Morgan, deflected away. Good hands on the run by Tron Foltz and the linebacker. And a really nice job by Folsom staying with it and locating the football. For a linebacker to be out in space out there with Stanley Morgan Jr. running underneath. That's a really nice job. And I like the play call from Scott Frost You're trying to be aggressive right before the half. Take a shot to your best playmaker. A little less than 90 seconds with which to work in the opening half on third and eight. Trojans showing blitz. Well picked up. Bunch gets out of there with time. Throws this one low and a fall incomplete. He had Morgan over the middle of the field, but the pressure by Troy's defense to flush him out of the pocket didn't allow him to set his feet to hit him. Expecting Nebraska will try to keep the football away from Sedarius Rooker, who took a 58-yard punt return for a touchdown earlier today. 
dangerous man adjusting those knee pads and awaiting the punt from Caleb Lightborn. Another bomb. Rooker from the 17. Not going to step away from tacklers there, wrapped up and dropped. Folks, families that have been affected by Hurricane Florence, they urgently need your support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate today by going to redcross.org or text Florence to 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Relief. Troy set to take over. Scott Frost soon to get his guys into the locker room for a little lecture. Caleb Barker threw for over 200 yards against Boise State, had a big, big touchdown performance last week against Florida A&M. He and Sawyer Smith have been doing the job today. A little pop pass for DeAndre Douglas. Douglas tripped up on the outside. Strong tackle by Luke Gifford. A really good job by the Cornhuskers defense recognizing the formation. You have DeAndre Douglas who gets the ball every now and again on these sweeps. A good job recognizing, communicating. 17-7 for Troy. We mentioned that Coach Frost would be lecturing his group. James, what would you expect to hear if you were listening to Scott during halftime? And when you go in that locker room, you tell your guys, look, we're right in this thing. We have the momentum. We scored last. Let's focus on cleaning up the little things that we talked about all week. Off the high snap, Barker gets it back. Troy avoids a disaster. Just trying to run the clock out if you're Troy getting to the locker room with a 10-point lead. See Deontay Crummity, the center there, talking with uh, Barker. Crummity's been up and down so far. They say he's been trying to clean up his snaps. You've seen media reports to that uh, expression, but there, that one exploded away from Caleb Barker. You don't have to harp on all the mistakes when you're in the locker room if you're a head coach. The players know it. Like, they know when you make a mistake. But you get to remind your guys, listen, we are very much in this thing. Let's go out there. Let's play a really clean second half. No more penalties. No more penalties. No, no more turnovers. Let's relax. And you say, listen, Troy gave us their best punch. We sustained it. We got the crowd back into it. Let's clean up those mistakes. Expect to Troy to take a knee here. No reason for them to put any added pressure on itself offensively. Neil Brown will counsel his troops at the half. Barker kneels down, and we are done with this uh, first half of play. 30 minutes complete, and Nebraska trailing by 10 here at home. If you're Neil Brown. You're very excited with the way your football team played in this first half. You've won the turnover margin. You've outperformed them on special teams. The Huskers ready to make amends. They'll have 30 minutes of regulation time to do it. Scott Frost continues to chat with the officials as uh, we are through. After this break, Mike Howard and Jerry with a Big Ten halftime report in just a few moments on BTN. The Fig Newton, sometimes you get a little pickle juice. You ever drink a little pickle juice on a hot day, Joe? All I know is I didn't get either of those up here in the booth for you <laughs> today, so I know where you stand. Season number 129 for Nebraska. The last time they were 0-2, folks, 1957. They're trailing by 10 to start the third. Spielman off to the races. Takes one bump and then gets flattened just out across the... 20 yard line. Spielman, you figure to be a target of Andrew Bunch as this second half goes along. Bunch in for the ailing Adrian Martinez, the outstanding freshman QB who became the first QB to start a season opener ever at Nebraska a week ago. Injured late in that contest against Colorado. Bunch has gone the distance today. He'll start with Greg Bell in the backfield. I think Andrew Bunce is going to do a better job making better decisions. You've got to throw the ball away when the opportunity presents itself. Definitely forced one earlier. Turned out to be an interception. 
As Nebraska's running game starts smoothly, Bell dropped by Rooker. Did a nice job. Bell cutting up the middle of the field. The offensive line opening it up for him. Good vision by Bell. Picking up 14 on the carry. Go right back to him, stopping and starting, and then gets stopped by the interior of the line. See Tyler Murray, who's been around the play a lot, along with Marcus Webb throughout this day, but we've called Murray's name a ton. We have, well, Greg Bell put a nice little shifty move there on Justin Wisenhunt. Sometimes you just gotta depend on your running back to, to make a move in the open field, and he did that there. Vic Koning said of Wisenhunt, he hasn't had a really good week of practice as the Huskers face a second at six. One minute into the third with college football on BTN. Spielman in motion, handed to him. Jitterbugs to the outside, spins and gets chopped down. Tyler Murray with the tackle. Greg Bell up to 10 carries today. A little bit more than five yards a clip. I think the combination of Bell, Washington, you throw in a Zigbo, who's Mr. Dependable, as they call him. You have a three-headed monster back there in the backfield for Nebraska. Lindsay in motion. Bunch to throw. Connects there at midfield. Stanley Morgan into Troy territory. First down, Huskers. And that's a nice job by Bunch there. He takes a shot. He knows he's going to take one. He's looking right at him. Stands in there and delivers it anyway. Showing off his toughness in the pocket. Marcus Webb, who's up some 27 pounds in the offseason, put a crunch on him. Bunch is dropped from the blind side. It's Hunter Reese. Well, Hunter Reese stands out on film when you study Troy and his ability to get after it. They're trying to set up a screen, a long developing screen with a pump fake. Bunch just doesn't have enough time to float the ball out there to Bell. Nebraska moving quickly on second and 20. Bunch to throw. Over the middle, he finds his man. It's Lindsey, although the officials are saying it's incomplete. Melvin Tyus was there in coverage. Lindsey was not able to reel it in. Well, good timing there. He doesn't, he doesn't really look it in. Ball kind of slips between his hands. And they had big drops a week ago. Coach Frost was talking to us about how he was disappointed in those. Another drop here today. Tyus did a good job of wrenching that one free as they were falling to the turf. Third and long here for Nebraska. Bunch. Throwing against the green there. Makes the connection to Bell. He And if you get that, if you catch that ball in the previous play there, Joe, then you're able to have a third and 10 instead of a third and extra long. There's not many plays in the playbook. If you're an offensive coordinator, you're Troy Walters or you're Scott Frost calling the plays. You're saying to yourself, what, what can we call to pick up 20 yards for a first down? There's not many in our playbook. So the drops come back to hurt them. Now they got a punt. Lightborn ready to hit it. He had, what, 13 punts better than 50 yards last year. This one he goes nose down. Rooker, who had the punt return, touchdown in the first half. from Montgomery, Alabama, doing it to Troy. Nebraska first and goal from the eight after this Rooker boo-boo. That's just the break that the Cornhuskers needed. Get in the football in the red zone. And that's the energy, that's the juice. So sometimes you just need a little something to happen in the game to fire your guys back up. Just stalled on the drive. Now you get it in the red zone. A huge possession for both squads. That stingy red zone defense for Troy. See if they hold up here. Bunch out of the pistol with Ozigbo. Ozigbo scampers outside. Lasso from the tail end. Hustling him down was Tron Folsom. Second year starter, second team all conference out of the Sun Belt. Well, you see the speed from Folsom. Folsom's only 6'2, 209 at linebacker. Allows him to be extremely athletic and run. And a nice job hustling and getting him down. 
second in goal. Ozigbo stopped again by Trayvon Sanders. Sanders, who didn't play last week, wasn't very effective against Boise in week one, but we've called his name a bunch. We have, and Hunter Reese there that time got under the polar, made Ozigbo stop his feet, and then Sanders was able to stop him here. You have to think they're going to throw here against, try to look for one of your guys, try to look for Stanley Morgan. Isolated down below. We've talked about the big fellas up front. The game was on their shoulders. The offensive line today supporting a first-time starter in Andrew Bunch. Can they clean house now? Bunch has time throwing the fade to the corner for Morgan. And a jump ball. He was uh, beaten there by Marcus Jones, his opposite number. That's exactly what they tried to do. And the entire time, Marcus Jones' eyes were back. A little hand fighting there, back and forth. But the entire time, Marcus Jones does a nice job of locating the football so that that hand fighting doesn't become necessary when you have your eyes on the ball. Pickering, who kicked for two Alabama State championship teams in high school. This 23-yard attempt is on the way, and he gets himself on the board. Nebraska gets a field goal off the muff punt, and the Huskers are within seven at home here at Lincoln. Corner Cam Taylor with a big play a few moments ago. 17-10 Troy as we look at today's Quicken Loans making the right play presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Yeah, on the punt there, the ball was right in the sun until the sun was in his eyes, and a nice job opportunistic by Cam Taylor jumping on that ball. And, but to be honest with you, Joe, that's a huge momentum boost for Troy because you have 90,000 plus here anticipating touchdown. Here we go. We're back in the inside the 10 and the defense going three and out, forcing a field goal. If you're on the Troy sideline, you're patting over all those defenders on the back saying nicely done. Lightborn will hit it. It was his high punt that forced the uh, fumble from Rooker. This one goes through the back of the end zone. Troy. Scored the first 17 points of this ball game if you're just tuning in with us with college football on BTN. Neil Brown's squad coming in from Troy, Alabama with a record of 1-1. One one. Last year, 11-2. and two. We remind you about Troy Johnson and Jenny Dell continuing their quest for the best food around the Big Ten. This Tuesday, they'll show you some of the top places to eat and watch the game. Catch an all-new Campus Eats Tuesday, 10 Eastern, right here on BTN. Jabir Daughtry Fry is in the backfield for Troy. As the running back, Caleb Barker, the QB, out of the gun. Barker looking this way, connects with Trey Eford. And Eford slashes across the 35. Lamar Jackson undercutting him there. Eford, Emmanuel Eford III. They call him Trey. A really nice job by the Troy offensive line getting downfield and blocking. And a nice scheme. They motion the back out to the other side. Gets the linebacker's attention. They start to flow that way. They come back to the bottom and throw the tunnel screen. Good play design and good execution by That's Troy. James Laurinaitis. I'm Joe Beninati. Damon Benning on the sideline for you. First and ten here for the Trojans who've won their last five road games. Nebraska, in fact, has lost five in a row at home. Ben Stilling getting his first call of the day, making that tackle off the end position on Daughtry Fry. Good job by Stilling using his hands, getting off a block, rallying to the football. Anytime you can do more than your job, every offense has, every play is drawn up for a touchdown if you're an offensive coordinator. But on defense, sometimes you have to use your hands and win. Eric Chenander, the defensive coordinator, says of Stilly, he's getting better every day. Sidney Davis in motion through the formation on second and seven. Parker with a little pitch and catch. Eford gets away from a high tackle and gets finished off by Trey Neal and Tyron Ferguson. A really nice effort there by Eford to break the tackles. Nice tough run here. Just ducks under the tackle attempt there. They love that guy's speed. He had a TD catch last week in the one-sided win over Florida A&M. Nearing the midway mark of the third quarter. 
The receivers are split out very wide up there, creating a lot of space. And now Nebraska adjusts themselves. Barker making the calls, takes the snap from center, drags it back down, slings it out there. Nearly a one-handed grab for Eford as uh, Barker managed to get that one over the hands of Tyron Ferguson. Caleb Barker trying to force one there and very fortunate. Eifert trying to channel his Odell Beckham there. Make the one-handed catch. Odell makes those look easy. He sure does. You ever see, you ever see him work in warm-ups? That's an uncomfortable day for a defensive back. Second and ten. Nebraska fans exhorting the troops on defense. B.J. Smith drilled. Will Honus filling the gap. Will Honus filling in for Mohamed Berry, who was ejected for targeting in the first half. He's made two really nice plays. Shoots the gap, puts his head right on the shoulder of the tailback. Moves his feet. Nicely done by the Juco transfer. And now it's really loud. Parker throws it inside for Sidney Davis. Davis gets wrapped up shy of first down yardage. Antonio Reed was the first man to latch onto him. And that's a nice tackle by Reed. Following the wide receivers, coming behind those blockers, and traced it down because it looked like they had something there. Reed recognized it right away and made a nice tackle. James, we see Khalil Davis and Antonio Reed. The Davis twins haven't been as obvious today. Parker throws over the middle, deflected away by Trey Neal. Neal, the graduate transfer from Central Florida, came over with the Coach Frost and all that coaching staff. Nebraska fired up with its defensive efforts. A chance now for the Huskers to tie things in a few moments when we return to Lincoln on BTN. University Trojans. It has been a sun-kissed day throughout. Temperatures in the 90s. Nebraska taking over. Maurice Washington, full sprint. Washington tracked down by Sedarius Rooker. A few moments ago, Damon Benning was within earshot of the Troy bench. Yeah, a little bit of hand-wringing and consternation from the Troy fans about why go for it. You've only got six first downs, and you're on Nebraska's 38. Well, Coach Brown says we're here to win, so you're going with the aggressive decision. It may bite him in the rear. Here's Nebraska's driving. Spielman was tackled around the toe. There's a flag that hits the turf. J.D. bounces up, hobbling a bit. Offense, number 15. 10-yard penalty, first down. Big Ten officiating crew today led by referee Jerry McGinn. And when you have aggressive D-backs like Troy has, and you shoot it sometimes and you're a wide out out there blocking, it's really hard not to try to finish. You see here, Hunt, that's his guy he's supposed to block. So you see his back, you know, it's instinct to say, hey, I'm going to try to get my man no matter what. You got to lay off in there and just take the loss and chalk it up that you missed him. Andre Hunt, the freshman, offensive coordinator Walter says we're going to need him this year. Off the pitch, here's Washington, stalked by Tyus, who made sure that uh, the sideline was his friend there. Well, right here, got hammered before he pitched the ball. He had to try to draw that defender. He did, but he took a shot for it. Andrew Bunch says of this offense, he loves the tempo it plays with. He put this one on the ground. Still down. The ball still free. Matt Farniak, the right tackle, all six foot six of him, covering it up. Well, if you're Bunch, you just got to jump on that. Ball hits the ground. They'll try to scoop it and get anything out of it. Just jump on it and get the ball back. He tries to scoop it up and run. At that point, it's just survival mode. Jump on the ball, live for the next down. Now you got third and forever. Again, you have to try to avoid these situations when you have a young quarterback, an inexperienced quarterback. 
Bunch standing tall in the pocket. Throws one underneath there. Tagging up with Maurice Washington. And the Husker fans wanted a call, and they'll get one. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense, number 40, 15-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage, automatic, first down. And this, and this wasn't even on Folsom, which you could have gotten one on him for a little extra after the tackle. That was on Antoine Barker for the illegal hands to the face. Player who is among the top performers against Boise when Troy opened the season at home, falling to Rippin and that outstanding team. The handoff, the Huskers will keep the ball on the ground. Reese is in there to make some contact on Maurice Washington. And on the right side of the screen, you'll see Barker coming around the corner. And when you get close to the quarterback, tough to see there. He must have got a swipe to the face of the tackle. You can't do that as a defender. Washington makes people miss. Sprinting to the outside. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Nebraska threatening to tie the score on this trip. Man, is he electric. His ability in the open field, his vision. Bounces it out sideways. Look at the leap at the end. Running like a gazelle out there. So tough to tackle. Coach Frost says if he gets a crease, it could be over. Bunch off the play action. He'll keep it. Slicing back against the green. Tracked down and dropped there. Kyler Knudsen made the tackle. Knudsen, the redshirt junior from Georgia. Well, I know they preach ball security a lot around here. Nebraska trying to go tempo. They are going lightning quick. Spielman on the outside. Spielman's going to track down the sideline. Touchdown. J.D. Spielman, 19 yards. On the score, there is a flag on the field. I think this is coming back. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 19. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. They flag the wide out, Mike Williams. Right at the end here, you'll see Williams, that little tug on the shoulder. And whenever a defender has his hand out like that, showing restriction, McDowell trying to shed the block. That's going to get called every time. Whenever the ref, he's just staring for some jersey to detach from the shoulder pad. Takes back the touchdown for the Huskers. Nebraska, after trailing by 17, trying to... Make the momentum swing in their favor. Washington will slither out of bounds. The scouting report on him says plenty of shake and bake, and he's shown it off. I've been very impressed with Washington. Greg Bell. They have a bunch of tailbacks here that can get the job done. It's Bell's turn now, James, on third and six. Andrew Bunch has gone the distance for Nebraska at quarterback. No Adrian Martinez today, although he is dressed on the sideline. Bunch wrapped up around the knees. Hunter Reese slicing through to make the tackle. There is Adrian Martinez, an outstanding debut a week ago, curtailed only by that late fourth quarter injury. Yeah, and you can see him staying engaged, has the headset on. You want to hear every single play call that goes in. But the last thing they want is to see him on the sidelines there. They want to see him out here being electric like he was a week ago. Field goal time, 32-yard attempt for Barrett Pickering. Kick on the way and right down the middle. Nebraska will have to settle for three. Martinez applauds. We'll get you back to Memorial Stadium in a moment on BTN. Egypt team now calling the shots for the Huskers. And what did he say it was? It was surreal for him to be back here. End over end, this will power its way through the back end of the end zone. Folks, weeknights, BTN Insiders bring you the latest news from around the conference. Discuss college football's major storylines. They tell you 
what to watch for in the nation's most important matchups. Big Ten football and beyond. Weeknights, 5 Eastern, right here on BTN. On a day when we are locked and loaded with nine different college football games before the evening is through. Joe Beninati, James Laurinaitis, Damon Benning, your announced teams. We shout out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew for their efforts day and night. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. 17-13 Troy, the reigning Sunbelt Conference champs, giving the Huskers all they can handle in Lincoln. Honus is the last man off the pile with help from Aaron Williams. B.J. Smith, the junior from Alabama, had 71 yards rushing last week. We've seen the Trojans employ a couple of different tailbacks. And they're trying to spread out Nebraska's defense. They went speed trips that time, Ian. The tight end was up top alone. All three receivers at the bottom of the field spread wide to try to open up some lanes inside against this very big and physical Nebraska defensive line. How about this for a stat? Troy is 25-0 and 0 under Neil Brown when they take a lead into the fourth quarter. 2.20 to go in the third right now. Eford playing hide and seek. Trey Eford will skip out of bounds. Neil made sure of it. Trey Neal, who's studying to be a dentist, James, he says flossing is underrated. Well, he, I'm, I, I'm guilty of not flossing enough. <laughs> I mean, I don't floss nearly enough. I'm sure my wife will tell me that. Quarterback of the defense here, though, he came from Central Florida, knew all about it, as there's a Trojan big man down on the field. The athletic trainer for the Trojans is Allison Gramley. Kirk Kelly, who was injured last week, is the man on the turf. We will step away. Have you back to Lincoln in just a few moments. Nice little raft. There we go. Inner tube laying out there, soaking in the sun. On a 90-plus degree day, we are focused on football. And Troy from Troy, Alabama, giving Nebraska all it can handle with college football on BTN. Third down conversions. Troy's had a tough day. The handoff. Nice run. Powering through. Off to the races there nearly. Jabir Daughtry Fry stopped by Dedrick Young. Young, who's a solid every play type performer at linebacker after Daughtry Fry gets 13. A nice play call there. Everyone assuming sneak. Instead, they hand it to Daughtry Fry. Goes around the edge for a big game in the first down. Offensive coordinator Matt Moore for the Trojans said we have to get him to the outside. First and ten near midfield for the Trojans in white. With a flag down, Barker looks over the middle, connects, but there is a whistle. Barker found his tight end Sam Letton, Ball but there starts. was a whistle. Offense, number 26. Five-yard penalty, first down. start on Zach Branner who came in for the injured Kirk Kelly. Austin Stidham out there as well. The big offensive line for Troy. The question was whether or not they could handle it. Measure up to the defensive front for Nebraska today. Late third quarter. Trojans on top. Daughtry Fry in motion. Parker to throw. Doesn't have a lot of time. It is Carlos Davis on the scene. And a week ago, the Davis twins had a day in the backfield. Carlos coming up with the sack, setting the Trojans way back behind the chains for a long second down here. Separated by five minutes. Carlos and Khalil. Carlos, the older one, by five minutes. James, this is second down in the truckload. And if you're Troy, you're thinking, hey, let's try to get seven, eight, make it a third and 12 or something. You cannot have third and 20 plus. Parker sticks it in the belly of the tailback, but there's another whistle before the play and a flag down. A late game. Offense. Number seven. Five yard penalty. Second down. Head coach Neil Brown. Getting hot on the sideline. It's so loud in here, it has to be difficult for visiting Troy. 
A lot of times it's tough to operate. You're trying to communicate a play call with all of your guys on offense, and you have to manage the clock, look over, and see how much time you have left. When you have 90,000 people screaming in the stadium, that's a tall order. Sold out since November of 1962. Second and 28. Put it out there in the flat for Dr. Fry. As he spun around, dragged to the ground by Aaron Williams. That's going to do it for three quarters in Lincoln. Troy on the road, long way from home. Carlos Davis helping to kickstart the defense for the Huskers in Lincoln. He tries to turn up the heat against Troy on third and very long. Barker to throw, fidgets free, dumps it off to a safety valve. It's caught there by DeAndre Douglas, but nowhere to roam as he's on his backside. And there's a flag on the field. And the Nebraska coaches don't look happy. And to the play. Personal foul. Offense. <laughs> Number 10. 15 yard penalty. Fourth down. I can tell you what, I saw one of the coaches from Nebraska out in the field yelling. And the reason is, don't get any, any, any jawing at all when it's third and extra long. There's no need for it. You risk a taunting penalty. A lot of those, Joe, can go either way. They can go on the receiver, can go on the DB. All that jawing back and forth after the play, there's just no need to... As we look at the replay, you see these two. Punt on the way is a low-line drive rugby style that will have plenty of top spin on it again. Fabulous roll for the Trojans. As we send it to Chicago, Mike Hall for this T-Mobile studio update. Joe and James, the running game has been great for Penn State this season. They've got 179 yards on the day so far, including seven right here for Mark Allen. It's a 32-point lead in the third. Looking good for the Nittany Lions. QB Trace McSorley's first ever career start came against Kent State. As Andrew Bunch returns to the formation for Nebraska, we have not seen Adrian Martinez at all today dealing with a leg injury. And as bad as this game has started, Joe, Nebraska is still in it. They got the ball in the fourth quarter, down four, and a whole lot of time to operate. Bunch and Stanley Morgan connecting on the outside. Stanley Morgan with that junkyard dog type mentality. If you're Scott Frost, you're just telling your fellows to stay the course. Keep battling. Keep believing. Keep fighting throughout this football game. Second and two. That play disrupted quickly. Driving in there was Justin Wisenhunt. He blew everything up. 25 in the white. Really nice job of recognizing the play by Wisenhunt. He sees the tight end insert, he shoots it. Really nice job. Defensive coordinator Vic Koning said, I need him to do it right. He did it there. Bell in the backfield on third and five. Bunch play action. Sprints away from pressure. Bunch turns the corner. It's driven out of bounds by Wisenhunt. Nebraska wanting a flag there. We'll see if he gets to him late. Bunch is trying to get around the corner, get to the first down. Very close there along the sideline. That's a close call there, Joe. It was. I'm torn as a defend defensive player. You see that first down marker, you're thinking, I got to stop him no matter what. Bunch was able to pick up the first down yardage. Nebraska ground game back on display. Reese making the tackle on Greg Bell. They nickname him the Eel James because he's able to slither through the cracks. He's been impressive here today. He runs hard. Tried to hit that crease there. Nebraska's used J.D. Spielman a lot in the backfield as a decoy as well. Motion him back to a two-back look. See him motioning now. This is Bell lowering the head, driving the legs forward. Trayvon Sanders was there to 
put a bump on to Bell. James, you as a former three-time All-America linebacker, all that motion, what does yeah. that do to your eyes? Well, as a linebacker, you know, you're trying to figure out where the ball's going, what are the tendencies, but what Nebraska's trying to figure out, that's essentially an option play. You give the ball the dive. If you don't see a defender running out there with Spielman, you can pull it and throw it out there quick. So it's just another way to kind of get a run pass option. Huskers three for 11 on third down conversions, and this is gonna be close. It looks short. Bell didn't get it. The tackle was made by Trayvon Mathis. Both teams were expected to go eight, nine deep when it came to defensive linemen today, especially with the heat. Scott Frost's team, they went for it on fourth down three times last week. We're 0 for 3 against Colorado. They're going to punt this one away. And I think it's a smart decision. Although you have 166 yards on the ground if you're Nebraska, in those short yardage situations, right there you think we line up and just run and get a first down. Troy, good job holding up. Whistle before the punt from Lightborn. Lay of game. Offense, number 35. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Seen both sides have some timing issues today. As Lightborn prepares to punt it. So Darius Rooker took one to the house in the opening half. 58 yards for a punt return touchdown. If you're just tuning in, Troy had a 17-0 lead in this game. Nebraska clawing its way back into it. Rooker says fair catch. This one has backspin on it. Covered up by the Huskers. Lightborn displeased. It's time for Nebraska to play some D. On the other side with this on BTN. Mayhem, Carlos Davis. Carlos Davis getting in the backfield with a big sack on Parker. The older of the two twins, him and Khalil, having a day today. They, they turned 22 last month. D coordinator Eric Trenander telling us Listen, these guys have to learn to compete with themselves. They're so talented, nothing should stop them. First and 10, Daughtry Fry ran right into Damian Daniels. Khalil and Carlos were ultra effective last week. You see the stats there. Extremely active, extremely talented. Four tackles today, a sack between them. And as they need to continue to practice better day in day out I've experienced this in my career sometimes you're around guys who are so talented practice can come easy to them you gotta learn to compete with yourself how do you push yourself to get better if they continue to improve watch out for those two second and nine Douglas in motion fake the fly sweep throw a crossing route that's deflected down and bounced away off the uh, equipment of Aaron Williams Looking for Letton on the drag. And a drop there by Letton. You see here on the end, they do a nice job on the play fake. The play fake sucked the linebackers up. You had a tight window there. Parker put it on the money. Third and nine. Huge conversion. Opportunity now for Troy. Clinging to the lead. Parker finds his man. Well done there. Rifling one in for Sidney Davis, who had a 19-yard TD catch last week. Really good coverage here on the play. They do a sprint out. They get Parker on the edge. He delivers a dart. Reed was in position. But the timing and the accuracy of Barker was just a little bit better. Antonio Reed, who had that critical personal foul penalty last week against Colorado on the third and 24. First down now for the Trojans in the white jerseys. Honus wrapping up quickly on the quarterback key. Last week, Joe, they struggled on third down long. Honus scraping over the top. That's a form tackle right there. That's how you wrap up. That's how you get after it. I love seeing good linebacker play, Joe. I wonder why that is. Um, I don't know. 
Maybe because you masquerade as a you know, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year of some sort. Something like that. Barker to throw. Puts it just off the fingertips of his target there. He was looking for Trey Eford. Barker, who's replacing a four-year starter in Brandon Silvers, more of a drop pack passer. He had him. He had him. You have to catch that if you are Eford. Trying to come into Memorial Stadium, get a big upset. He was trying to look. He knew there was nobody behind him. Catch that. He might still be running. Lamar Jackson there, 21 in red, waved a hand across the vision of Eford. Third down and nine, everybody up inside of Memorial Stadium. Blitz is coming. Picked up well. Barker does not find his target, but there's a late flag down. I think they're going to get him for pass interference here. Pass interference. Defense. Number 24. Automatic. First down. We mentioned Williams been dealing with the shoulder problems. He hasn't been practicing very much, but practicing much better in the last couple of weeks and earning the trust of his coaching staff. And back-to-back -back weeks, Joe, penalties, third downs have hurt this team. There you have an incomplete pass. The throw is inaccurate. You're off the field after a third nine. And he must have had that right arm draped around. Let's look from this angle and see. That's iffy to me. I agree. Defensive coordinator Eric Chenander, we saw him on the sideline. He says he loves it and he hates it to be down on the sideline. Sure. They want one voice for the defense there. First and ten. About six minutes into the fourth. Sidney Davis in motion. Ball down the turf for a moment. Cleaned up by Caleb Barker, the quarterback. Another snap that Troy can get. Very fortunate to get back. You just got a nice gift of a, play, of a penalty call from the officials. You're in plus territory. Barker saved that and does a nice job getting back to the line of scrimmage to keep it in second 10 instead of being second 15 or so. We've seen both Deontay Crumity and Dylan Bradshaw at center for the Trojans. It's Bradshaw right now who they said had a great offseason. Second and 10. Barker connects there on the outside. As the Huskers had that surrounded, we send you back to Chicago and Mike Hall. It's a T-Mobile studio update. Joe, Maryland has been doing nothing on offense, but they're scoring points on special teams. Jesse Annabonham gets the block and the score. 27 yards, Maryland still down 14 in the fourth. It's the first time that Temple's been to College Park in some seven years, Mike. Those two schools not separated by a whole lot of miles. Here in Lincoln, fans are trying to disturb Caleb Barker's rhythm. Another third and nine opportunity for this defense. They've had two before. They gave up one on a nice pass, the other on a defensive pass interference. Troy's going to take a timeout. We'll step away, resume the fourth quarter festivities with you in just a few moments. Tom Osborne and the late Brooke Beringer. Osborne, such a mentor and good friend, to current head coach of the Huskers, Scott Frost. Coach Osborne's been on campus a whole lot more lately. Big third and nine now facing Troy on the lead here in Lincoln, just about halfway through the fourth. Smith in motion. Barker on the quarterback, Kate drives it straight ahead. Parker first down yardage, keeping the chains moving for Troy. Look what the motion does to the linebackers. Where the tailback motions down to the bottom of your screen here, you'll see the linebackers depart and follow. The guard pulls. Now you have a guard leading up the way for the quarterback, Parker, to get the big gain and big third down conversion. Defensive coordinator said, don't be fooled by orbit motion or fly sweep motion or changing the strengths. Troy is going to try and deceive. Barker carries this one. Step 
Gibbs to the outside. He's waltzing inside the five. There is a flag down. Luke Gifford with a touchdown saving tackle. Holding. Offense. Number six. Ten yard penalty. First down. On the left side of your screen, you'll see the hold right there. Wrap that arm around a defender. That's easy for the official to call. It's Reed's trying to detach. He's got that thing. He's trying to bear hug him. They get the senior, Sidney Davis, James. There are only 12 scholarship seniors on this Trojan roster. Troy coming in at one and one. Next game is at Louisiana Monroe for them next week. They didn't play against them last year. Nebraska getting set for a date in Ann Arbor to open Big Ten play with Michigan. For now, they've got their hands full with the Troy University Trojans. Run straight ahead. Sprinting to pay dirt. This is a touchdown waltz for B.J. Smith. All of a sudden, the ground game opens up for 26 yards and insurance for Troy. And again, the jet sweep motion gets guys moving. Messes up with the linebacker's eyes. Somebody's out of a gap there. A huge touchdown run by Smith to extend their lead. They always say he reads the zone and the counter well. B.J. Smith trots in for the score. Extra point try now for the Trojans from Tyler Sumter. Right down the middle, and Troy's lead grows to an uncomfortable 11 for Oscar fans. See the big gaping hole there through the Nebraska defense. Not the answer that Nebraska wanted. Shenander, not happy. Coach, you have to keep the big picture in mind, Joe, when you're going in these football games. And there's some Big Ten SEC pride involved in that one. Missouri QB Drew Locke, tough to handle, though. This kick back in the direction and over the head of the Husker return man. Now on the touchdown run, Troy's going to send a jet sweep motion to mess with the eyes of the Nebraska defenders. And as we look, we'll have three Nebraska defenders outside of the offensive tackle. They don't adjust with the motion. It leaves a gaping hole in the middle of the defense and an easy touchdown run for B.J. Smith. You could have ran through that hole, Joe. Yes. Yes, and then I would have stumbled and fallen right around the five. <laughs> Probably lost the ball, the whole deal. Uh, and then come back up and said, you know, it's it's too hot. Yeah. 100 degrees down there. Butterfly. That turf, when you play on turf, it's an extra 10 degrees hotter on that. Those black pellets in that turf really get hot. Nearing the top of the hour now with college football on BTN. Andrew Bunch pressured in the backfield. Balls out. It's picked up by Maurice Washington, and then he's lassoed down. Making the tackle there, Travis Salo, who was uh, expected to see a lot of time at nose guard. Did Washington lose his pants there, or was that me? It looked like it. I'll tell you what. That was, a, was that a wardrobe malfunction? Very fortunate to get that ball back. As the Huskers get right back to work. Trailing now, 24-13. Our rules analyst in Los Angeles is Dean Blandino. Hey, Tony, when he talks to you, he doesn't necessarily need to come in. He's just giving more. Timeout taken here with a little bit more than six minutes to go. In the fourth quarter, Carlton Marshall is the man down for Troy. Linebacker who just uh, recently earned scholarship. We'll take this time out. Get you back to Lincoln after these words. Discover Nebraska, 9-0 all time against current members of the Sun Belt Conference. Fell behind 17-0 today. Drew within 17-13, but B.J. Smith, the last man on the board most recently. Washington. Racing to the outside, taken down. Wizard will get credit for the tackle. Nebraska going with redshirt sophomore Andrew Bunch today at quarterback. No Adrian Martinez, who was splendid in his debut last week, albeit in a losing effort. He came up injured late in the fourth, has not appeared today. Huskers need something explosive from Bunch. He gets away from a couple of sack 
tense. And it's Bearhug, the Stilson, ties up with Wizenhunt with a flag coming down. Personal foul, base mask, defense, number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, nice job by Bunch escaping the rush. And at the end here, Folsom's gonna try to get the ball out. Just gets a hold of his face mask as he tries to strip the ball, which you're taught as a defensive player a lot of times when you get him held up like that, try to get the ball out. But unfortunate for Folsom and for Troy, you get that face mask at all, that's 15 yards. Folsom who led the Trojans in tackles last year. A whole bunch of penalties today, upwards of 20 split between the two. As Sanders puts the hit on Trayvon Sanders. I think it was Vic Koning who was giving him a little bit of a razz by saying, you know, he's disappeared lately for us. He's been visible today. Yes, he has. Great penetration there. He beats Tanner Farmer across his face. He's not able to get there as Farmer. Second down and long for Bunch. He'll throw. Time goes through his checklist, checks it down to Washington. Maurice Washington is into Troy territory, marked down at the Trojan 39. Marcus Jones with a tackle. 445 left, and Nebraska needs some good fortune to happen quickly now. Yeah, they got to keep this tempo up and get some chunks, try to get a score as quick as possible. Washington hobbling, it looked like without a shoe there. He's got the football, but he's just limping a little bit. On this handoff, it's Ozigbo. Levine Ozigbo. Another flag hits the turf as Ozigbo gets first down yardage. Tyus gets the tackle. Why was Maurice Washington struggling? Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty, third down. They get Brendan Hymas for the hole. Here's why Washington was a little gimpy. You see him here take a good shot. Right on the quad. You hope it's nothing to do with his knee. But as I tell you, I've taken a deep thigh bruise before playing, and that is painful. You take a helmet shot to your IT band on the outside of your quad, it can give you a dead leg for a few plays. That's probably why he was able to jog over to the sideline. You could see him writhing and wincing there in pain. Bunch sets his feet, fires underneath to Ozigbo, wrapped up quickly, spun around and down by Marcus Jones. Coach uh, Neil Brown, James, was talking about the best team tackling in space today would have a decided advantage. How has his team done in the open field? He's done a really nice job, um, and they're going to need to come up with a big play here on fourth down for this Troy defense. They tackled well in space today. Fourth and eight off the head fake. Bunch going deep. There's a man there on target to the catch. Kurt Raftal, the tight end with a huge grab. And Husker Faithful still have hope. What a throw and a high pressure moment. The game probably on the line with three, you know, three and a half left. Has to make that throw, has to get that first down. Fourth and eight gets 26. Right back to the ground. Osigbo powers his way inside the Troy 10. Folsom with a trip up. There's confusion right now in the Troy defense. You can tell. They weren't even aligned on that snap. The tempo getting to him. Here it comes right back at him. On the outside, Jarvis Hayes was there. Stopping Divine Ozigbo, the senior from Texas. Just about three minutes left to work in this fourth quarter. Nebraska in catch-up mode. Bunch outside Spielman. Makes a man miss. J.D. Spielman. Touchdown, Huskers. A seven-yard grab and run. Nice job there by Spielman being able to get in the end zone and a huge drive by young Andrew Bunch being able to lead them down the field here with 2.55 left in the fourth quarter. The tempo that time that Nebraska's offense played with got Troy on their heels. Brendan Hymas making his wobbly way back towards the sideline for Nebraska. With the Huskers trailing now by five and a little less than three to go. If they go for two and convert, they make it a 
a field goal difference between themselves and the Trojans. Yeah, this is this is the only decision to me would be to go for two here. Try to get within a field goal. Take some pressure off the offense if you have the opportunity to get the ball back. Split the big tight end, and I mean big, at six foot eight, Austin Allen. They don't recruit him small here. No. You got six eight when Allen, six seven and Raftall, and six four and Stoll. Raftall had the big fourth down catch and conversion as Nebraska goes for two. A little bit less than three minutes to go on BTN. An exciting finish between Nebraska and Troy. Bunch out of the gun. Sets his feet. Throws high. It's incomplete. He was looking for Spielman. It will remain a five-point deficit. We will hurry our way back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln in just a few moments. Bunch putting it in the hands of a playmaker, J.D. Spielman. Defending champions of the Sun Belt. They've won the Sun Belt Conference six different times. So has Arkansas State. Nebraska beat Arkansas State here a season ago on BTN. Lightborn is ready to kick it off, and we are wondering if we'll see something onside here, or do you expect them to kick it deep? I think they'll kick it deep. Troy's lining up for an onside kick. You have three timeouts, 255. You have plenty of time. Trust your defense. Get the ball back. Lightborn listens to you and knocks it uh, through the back of the end zone. On the last drive for the Huskers, which keeps hope alive, this was a big fourth down conversion. Yeah, fourth down. He puts the ball only where his big tight end can go and get it away from the defender. Big throw and catch. Then get the ball into your playmaker's hands. J.D. Spielman making a defender miss, dives into the end zone. Really nice job. That failed two-point conversion, though, means when Nebraska, if they do get the ball back, they're going to have to score six to get over the hump. Right plenty now, plenty of defense. fans in red, James, eager to see that happen. B.J. Smith is in the backfield. Starting quarterback Caleb Barker is there. One of the few times today he's under center. The handoff for Smith, tracking him down quickly off the edge. Tyron Ferguson, who goes 1,000 miles an hour all the time. We need a commercial timeout. Back for this one's conclusion in a moment. The decibel level is rising. Caleb Barker brings him up on second and 10. Douglas in motion. Barker off the roll, throws this one incomplete. Time for us to welcome our football audience. Just joining us in from the Indiana game with Ball State, the Hoosiers victorious. We welcome you to Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Huskers are in trouble, but trying to force uh, Troy to give them the ball back. It was a 17-0 lead for the Trojans. Nebraska rallied. Troy has the lead by five right now as we get late in the fourth. Third down conversion. You saw that note on the screen. Trojans stay on the ground. 24-19 for Troy. We welcome the audience just joining us, seeing the Maryland Terrapins fall to Temple earlier today. We are in Lincoln at Memorial Stadium, sold out since 1962. The Huskers off their season-opening loss to Colorado, trying to avoid being 0-2 for the first time since 1957. They forced a fourth down now, with 2.40 remaining in regulation, and the deficit is five. A huge stop there by the defense of Nebraska a huge opportunity. A lot of things have gone wrong for the Cornhuskers today. Special teams, penalties, turnovers. But with 2.40 left, you have an opportunity to get the ball back. See if the young man, Andrew Bunch, can lead them down in the touchdown drive. A wave of college football on BTN today. Nine games going on before all is said and done. This, the last of our earlier ones. This one, an 11 a.m. local time kickoff in Lincoln. Lindsay. Looking at this booming drive from the punter, Sumter, who's had a fine day today. 
pleased with himself as the Huskers get a chance now for a game winning drive with Andrew Bunch at the helm. There was a penalty. There was a penalty against Troy. For those of you just joining us, Troy, their last score, B.J. Smith romping in from 26 yards, but the Huskers converted this fourth and eight, James, and put one on the board themselves thanks to J.D. Spielman. Yeah, and a really nice drive, one that they needed to get six on. They're going to need that again as they get the ball back. They're going to make Troy re-kick this. After a 57-yard punt, it's negated by the penalty. So the Trojans are going to have to do it again, namely... Tyler Sumter, who's doing double duty. There was a time when he focused only on punting. He just hit a beauty. Adrian Martinez, boy, you know, he'd love to get in there. Martinez has not played today. Injured late in the fourth in that loss to the Buffaloes a week ago. That's a smart decision to accept this penalty. All those guys are tired from running down, covering that last punt. Let's see if it pays off for Nebraska. Sumter to hit it again. Another good one. Dragging its tail. He says, fair catch, and he'll make it. Nebraska will start first and 10 from its own 28. Adrian Martinez has been without his helmet all afternoon long, James. I would imagine there is no, no thought about bringing him off the bench. No reason to risk such a talented prize quarterback. No, he's your future at the position, and there's no need to bring him in with a knee brace. Uh, he's cold in the sideline, doesn't have a rhythm. It's unrealistic to think he could go in there and lead a game-winning drive, having not taken a rep today. Bunch with the pressure on his shoulders. Andrew Bunch, all the QBs, they take a, a game test each week, regardless of whether they're starting. He was ready. Here comes the pressure, and Bunch will throw it away as Wiz and Hunt came storming in from his blind side. Well, earlier in the game, Bunch held onto the ball and wouldn't throw the ball away. Good job recognizing the pressure and getting out far enough to get rid of that football. Nice job by the Troy defense of masking that blitz. Huskers have one timeout to work with. Troy has a pair with 2.20 to go, and Nebraska looking for a leading score. Bunch, well protected, throws high. Sunders Sunderland more of a corner they say he plays the spear for the Trojans and that is a spear and dagger to Scott Frost just throws the ball a little high and when you have a tip by a wide receiver it's usually bad news when the ball is floating in the air and a nice interception by Sunderland good focus to catch that off the deflection but the ball just a little high and J.D. Spielman couldn't go up and get it. Sunderland, who had an interception in one of those Red River shootouts between Oklahoma and Texas back in 2016. It is Will Sunderland who gets the ball right back for the Trojans. Two minutes and 15 seconds away, trying to win for the first time ever against teams currently in the Big Ten. Handoff to the lead back once more, B.J. Smith. Nebraska coughing it up for a third time today. The same things hurt Nebraska this week as a week ago. We have penalties. We have third downs. You're not able to get off the field. The turnovers. It's going to be the same message this week for the players in Nebraska. Coach Foss is going to go in there and say, gentlemen, I keep preaching to you that these little things turn into big things throughout a football game, and they can throughout a season. Until we correct those little those little things and little details. Those were his direct words, James. And then he finished it by saying, champions, don't make that mistake. Don't make those miscues. And he would know. Javier Daughtry Fry wrapped up by Trey Neal. As the pensive and pondering fans here in Lincoln are worried. One minute, 13 seconds away from being 0-2 for the first time in the late 50s. This is third and three now for the Trojans. And time ticks. I promise you, we heard from the coaches in Nebraska. They did not overlook Troy. They knew that this would be their Super Bowl. They made sure their players knew it. It's going to be a tough film session 
tomorrow here in Lincoln. On third and three, Sawyer Smith will take it. Smith is it. We saw him spark and drive earlier in the first half with a good feet at the quarterback position. We are late in this one. Back to Lincoln right after these words. University Trojans in victory pose. A kneel down from Caleb Parker. Troy University coming from Troy, Alabama to Lincoln and knocking off Scott Frost and the Huskers a 24-19 final. Well, a disappointing loss for Scott Frost. You're trying to get your first victory in front of your home crowd here. for the first time since 1957. But if you're a Cornhusker fan, you have to realize this is a big picture, long-term build here. And when you're trying to change uh, culture, patience is going to be needed. Nonetheless, disappointing. Troy University didn't do it against Boise State, but they take down Nebraska by the final of 24-19. Coming up, our history-making Big Ten Saturday continues. Mike Howard, Jerry setting the stage for the remainder of our slate. That comes after these commercial breaks. For James Laurinaitis, for Damon Benning, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanks so much for your time. It's B.J. Smith and the Trojans. Too much for Nebraska.